All right, Joel Klatt is with us now. Klatt, of course, college football on Fox at Joel Klatt on Twitter. And he is with us courtesy of mybookie.ag. Code next round to get that sign-on bonus up to $1,000. What is up, Klatt? How are you? I'm good. Good morning, guys. How are you today? Awesome. Good to see you as always. I, I'm glad you covered up your shelving so we don't already see the four playoff teams in helmets on the selection <laughs> show behind you there. So I'm glad you got the kick of the cut. Oh, <laughs> man. Glad I... I mean, when when the listen, I pay attention to everything when I watch TV. You know, like like you can't not. I'm on the plane. I'm going from Houston. I was connected from Houston back to Orange County Sunday morning, and the first time he came on, I was like, I was like, did is, well are those it? Are those the teams? <laughs> like, what, hold on, like what's what's going on? You're referring to, uh, I think Herbie, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, okay, okay. I was. Yeah. Man, and then they waited 15 minutes, and I was like, well, we, we already know. And, <laughs> and then as soon as Texas was number three, I was like, okay, it's going to be Florida State. Because Texas was always going to be just one spot ahead of Bama. Yeah. So as soon as Florida State was three, or excuse me, Texas was three, I knew Florida State was out. Wow, that's uh, yeah, that's good, be, that you being that observant. Because we sat here, we saw the shot of Kirby, I, or, uh, of Herbie. I never even thought about it. Did yeah. you guys think about it? Because no, I, I would have jumped on mybookie.ag and I would have hammered down. <laughs> no, I remember looking right? at it and looking right? at it, but I didn't think that was the order. But people have confirmed now. They've gone back and checked it, and you're exactly right. Uh, so what is, uh, give us give us your smart, intelligent take on <laughs> – I mean, you always do. You know, we love having you on because you're such a deep thinker. Uh, tough place for the committee. How, how did they do? Yeah. Um. Okay, so the the committee did did fine, right? Like they they did the best job that they could with the parameters they were given, right? Um, and and you know if you if you want to be mad, I think that that's fine. Um, I think that it's it sucks, and someone was going to get left out. I've always believed, always, um, that the committee is going to take the path of least resistance. And it's because it's 13 human beings who, by the way, aren't even in this sport full time. Like this is not their full time job, which I think is also wild. We've got a lot of smart people that do college football for a living and they're not in the room. And we put a bunch of administrators and, and you know, a couple of former players who are business leaders, a professor. Um, and and we expect them to, to come up with this it, path of least resistance was very simple for me at the end of the day. They get into a room and, and you start actually looking at it and discussing it. And you've got two spots. You've got three teams. And so, like all of us, eventually you're going to get down to the, the, the question in your own mind of, of, at least I would say, like, what's the worst case scenario? And, and for the committee, you look at these three teams and you're like, what am I saying no to if, if we leave them out? Well, if you say no to Alabama, you're saying no to the SEC. You're saying, saying no to Greg Sankey. You're saying no to the most dominant league um, that we have known in college football, uh, in particular in, in modern vintage, uh, and, and not just the SEC and Greg Sankey and, and the dominance that that league has had. You're saying no to the preeminent brand in the SEC. I know that they're not Georgia and haven't won the last two national championships, but this is Alabama, for goodness sakes. This is the team with the most national championships in history. This is the coach with the most national championships in history. He is the best coach in the history of college football. They just ended a 29-game winning streak for the two-time defending national champions. You're not going to say no to that team. It's just not. And, and Ryan, I know that you've been saying for a long time, like, SEC champ is getting in. Yeah. And I firmly agree because of the things I'm telling you. That's just a, a, a bridge too far for a group of 13 humans. At that point, Texas goes. They beat them in Tuscaloosa. And, and, and then you get to Florida State, and you have this convenient excuse about Jordan Travis. You see the game and how, how much they struggled against Louisville on offense. You've got the parameters written right down in front of you about the unavailability of players for the playoff. You've also got this um, ambiguous and subjective language of four best. You've got this performance on Saturday night, and you know that you're going to be vindicated as soon as the betting lines come out for the games that you're making. Right. Not, not only in the semifinal, but what the betting line is going to be for Florida State with whoever they play. This time it's Georgia. It's a 14 point spread right away. And they can all throw their hands up and say, see, with what we were given, we gave you the best that we could. And and that's 
that's what it is to me. And and to me, and when you look at look at it through that lens, does it suck? And can you be really mad if you're a Florida State fan? Yes. And I think the rest of college football, we all are like, hey man, that sucks for that team, those players. There's no doubt. But this is certainly a better playoff than than if Florida State would have been included, even though they deserved it. Yeah, the path of least resistance. You're dead on because if Georgia beats Alabama, Texas is out. Florida State's right. in. You've got four undefeateds. They've got really no argument. They're not worried about it. I think it comes down to this, though, and this is what made it make makes it easy for me. Florida State couldn't win two games if they were in this in in this uh, college football playoff. They just couldn't. And I, I don't know if you agree but, with that. No, I, I, I just I don't see Florida State winning no, I, one I, game, I much less two. Okay, so now let's get let's get deeper. All right, so let's now let's go down the the conspiracy theory ring if you wanted to. Um, there's no television deal next year yet for the for the expanded playoff those first round games aren't sold yet they're actively trying to sell them they're trying to sell them for a number which i know which is wildly out of um out of line with what the market would tell you you could actually underwrite those games for from an advertising perspective and and just for just for the record the the semifinals and the championship stay for the next two years uh under the current contract with abc espn so they're bidding out the Correct. other games, right? The, and, on, the and, on campus. No, yeah. no, no, no. And, and the quarterfinal games because those are just going to the New Year's Six games. Because okay. remember, we're just expanding inside of the New Year's Six structure. Okay. So all of those games are already sold. And then the only new games for bid are the four first-round games on campus. Okay, okay. Okay? Okay. And, and that's for the next two years. And then the entire thing is up for bid, and the structure will change a little bit in 2026. Um, which is when the original television contract for the 14 playoff ends. Okay. So, you know, they're currently trying to sell those first four games. Um, It's no secret that the playoff to this point has featured some less than competitive games, even in the semifinal round. You know, I've heard the stat and I, and I don't know if it's totally true, but I believe that the average margin is somewhere north of 15, something like 19 points in semifinal games. Um, let's just say guys, and I know that these 13 people are not the one negotiating with television. And I know that they might not even, you know, know what I'm telling you, but if you're the college football playoff entity, if you're the, the folks in the room that are trying to sell those games and you don't have a television deal. And right now it doesn't look like it's all that close to, to getting a deal done. And we're only 12 months away from those games actually happening. Um, I could tell you the last thing you would want is an uncompetitive semifinal game when you're trying to say that these oh. games have value that, you know, are are north of what the advertising value within those games could be. So if, if you want to look at like the, the deeper side of things, you know, I think that that I don't know if that played a factor or not, but it's certainly th- something that I find interesting when you're looking at this whole thing. Yeah, so you were basically saying Florida State can't win a game. Yeah. Yeah. And and it may not be competitive, so you didn't want to go try to sell a car. Listen, without Jordan Travis, they play any of those teams, and it's just like, oh, oh, my goodness. You know, like this, this, that wouldn't be good. Yeah, so it was almost like if if they put Florida State in, they would have had a fender bender and then try to sell the car on the market, and it was going to be devalued because of the accident. That's a great – a great point there by you, Clad. Do you think we should get away from the committee totally and just do the BCS rankings, or do you want to keep the human element oh, in yeah. it and just put different people on there? So, no, the B, the BCS system of ranking teams vastly superior to this committee system that right. we have of ranking team, and that's just mathematics. You know, I was an econ major. We all took statistics. The more variables in the equation, then the less statistical variance e- each variable in the equation gives us. You know, like it's going to uh, affect the outcome less. Um, you throw out outliers when you're dealing with statistics a lot, so that you're dealing with more numbers or variables that are within the bell curve versus on the edges of the bell curve. Um, you're, you're hearing the smartest terms that I know how to talk about guys. This is it. Like, this is the, like the peak of all I know is, is defensive structure. And and then this a little bit. And when it comes to numbers, but I will tell you that we, I think that we should have the BCS model 
and then just changed the human elements from the coaches poll and the AP poll to like two different committees that give us a poll and a couple of different computer systems that give us a poll so that we can vary out the outliers. See, if, if this committee gave us this poll, I guarantee you another human committee would have given us something maybe a little bit different. Right. And then the, the computers would have given us something different. And, and at the end, we would have something that I think a lot of us believe in more than just 13 humans in a room. And again, I just come back to this. It's, it's 2023. And we have 13 people in a room that don't do it full time. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've got, look, Clyde, if I, if I put these five people in a room, if I put you, Brock Heward, uh, Kirk Herbstreet, Josh Pate, and Rick Neuheisel, how quick could you guys have figured this thing out? Just five. And that's all I need. And I don't think any people would respect y'all's opinion more than the 13 committee members. I, I mean, I would, I would think, but. You know, I, I don't know. And by the way, th there are people, the eight administrators in that room, really good people. I know right. a lot of them, right? All these AD, they're really good. They want what's best for the sport. It pained them to do that to Florida State. I know that. You know, no one's, they're, they're charged with an impossible task. And yet, guys, they have a financial stake in this thing. Yes. Like they get revenue for their individual entity based on the college football playoff. Like it, like it blows my mind, you know? Um, so the, the, the model of how we do it is totally broken. And, and to your point, Lance, I, yeah, I mean, we could have figured this out pretty quick. Yeah. I, I have nine. You, you want to keep it different. Nine uh, people. Yeah, I have four media people, uh, four coaches and a, a person that would be the chairman who would, do the okay. Inter this inter guy's got a lot of time. Yeah, it's, 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 Jim thinks a lot. Joel Clatt, Joel, 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 man, Clatt, huh? Joel Clatt, Kirk Herbstreit, Josh Pate, Brock Heward. Well, I mean, Josh Pate, man, what a moment for yeah. him. I know. tell you, this is what is it? Pater, or yeah. what do they call him? Pate State. <laughs> Pate State. Know, what, is that right? Huh? And to make it non-controversial, I think the president of the United States. No, no, no. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> the four former coaches, former ACC coach Jim Grobe. I mean, I'd like to be done with that committee meeting meeting, uh, meeting before 2 p.m. So <laughs> former ACC coach Jim Grobe. Right. Former Big Ten coach Urban Meyer. Former Big 12 coach Bob Stoops. Former SEC coach Gene Chizik. I love how you threw an Urban Meyer, a former well, yeah, SEC yeah. coach, in there. I noticed, yeah. I noticed that. That <laughs> always slide into us. You see guys on the radar. He's also yeah. on Fox. We're leading heavy Fox here. Yeah. And, and then the chairman and the person who would go out and do it every week, nobody hates this guy. Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. The he Rock? college football. Play, play football. <laughs> and he'd be the guy that would go out and explain it every week. Yeah, he's got time to yeah, do that. God knows The Rock needs the yeah, money. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Either him or Seacrest. Right. Either him or Seacrest. <laughs> and then Seacrest does the unveiling. That's right. After, After the, the break. break. Yes. After the break. Oh. After the break. I mean, this is perfect. This is perfect. All right. Oh, Clatt, will, uh, Clatt will join us leading up to the games. We'll break the games down more. Obviously, he has seen a ton of Michigan football. Uh, this year, so uh, he will let us know if Michigan can stay on the field with Alabama uh, in future visits. <laughs> Man, hey. I mean Vegas thinks Vegas thinks they can. Yep. MyBookie.com, dot com, yep. they think they can. Yeah, down to one today. Down yeah, to I one. know we'll yeah. get more into this game, but I had a, a a guy text me last night, and he's like, I would really be worried about Michigan if they had a a a uh, a quarterback that could run, and I was like. J.J. McCarthy runs a legitimate 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> yeah, he can run. He We're he judging does. book by cover. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's a white uh, guy and he runs yeah. a 4-4? Four, four? Yeah. Yeah. I am concerned for Michigan's defense. They haven't seen anybody like like Milrow. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Bama has seen – there is not a team that is as complete as Michigan is. Even Georgia wasn't as complete. Right. Now, I'm not saying that, that Michigan's definitely better than Georgia, but, man, they do everything really well. Um, and can win in a lot of different ways. I think that's a, a, a an amazing game. I'm going to be there. Uh, I'm taking my boys, and we're going to be there. Oh, right, we'll we'll be, be, we're going to be there. there. Tailgate we're going to be there. Yeah. Yes. Let's uh, let's do a clap party. Yes. Let's do it. I I, I love it. Hey, we I, haven't I'm we in. haven't booked accommodations yet. We can. Uh, yeah. How many Casa rooms? Day clap. Yeah. How many rooms yeah, at you your house? Spot. Uh. Yeah. You guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Dan Damn it, I just cooked you off our committee, Newport, yes. Right? Well, yeah. you guys have stayed in Newport before. Newport. Oh, it's in yeah. Newport. We have booked accommodations there in Newport. So we were just we were just Where seeing. 
Where at? You're no, probably like five minutes from my house. Security reasons. We cannot yeah. tell you the actual hotel. Uh, well, I'm, I'm trying to get us to get an Airbnb. We'll, 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 let's we go be next door. Let's go have dinner. Okay. Or yeah. you guys can come over for dinner. One of the two. That would be great. Okay. okay. I'll text you where we're staying, and you can give me a review. It says it's nice. Okay. Can, well, I've stayed Newport there. Beach, I've stayed there yeah, before. It's, it's okay. No, the first yeah. time I first time I ever went to Newport Beach, I didn't know a whole lot about L.A. This was Bama, Texas, back in '09. <laughs> And I'll never forget, Dunaway and I flew together. We landed and we get a Uber or a taxi or whatever. And on the way to the hotel, we pass a Jag dealership, a Porsche dealership, a BMW dealership, and a Maserati dealership. Yeah. I'm like, I guess we're in a nice part of town. Yeah, I was, I was so comfortable. Yeah, I, think so, we're good. Yeah. I was so comfortable. It's the first time I ever stayed in a hotel and didn't even shut my door. <laughs> <laughs> I just left it propped open. I, I, I wasn't scared at all. <laughs> uh, all right, so Clad. Uh, we'll see you next week, buddy. Thank you very much for the time. You got it. You all got right, it. All right, boys. Have a good day. Clat with us each week, courtesy of mybookie.ag. Code next round. Uh, when you sign on at mybookie.ag, and they will match that sign-on bonus up to one thousand dollars. You get a little nice initial deposit match up to a thousand dollars. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with mybookie.ag code next round.